This week, Ubisoft revealed the season pass for Far Cry 5. And you know what? It's pretty bonkers, actually. Far Cry 5 is out on PC, PS4 and Xbox One on March 27th. The game takes place in the fictional Hope County, Montana, following all the usual Far Cry cues. A first person action adventure with stealthy bits, an open world, lots of guns and lots of vehicles. Now the setting of the base game is one thing, but the game's season pass will include DLC that takes place in some pretty exotic locations. First up there's a trip back in time to the Vietnam War in the DLC pack Hours of Darkness where players will be tasked with fighting the Viet Cong. Then there's a zombie themed pack called Dead Living Zombies. And lastly, there's the Lost on Mars pack, which has you fighting alien arachnids on the red planet. So that's some set of locations and themes there. And just a little FYI, the Far Cry 5 season pass will also come with a copy of Far Cry 3, which if you ask me, is the best one. But you know, going for all these wacky settings isn't the first time that Ubisoft has actually done this. Cash your minds back to Far Cry 3's Blood Dragon expansion of a good few years ago, which turned the game into some trippy 80s sci-fi thing. It was well good. The Far Cry formula of shooting, sneaking, hunting, exploring, and driving around an open world all in first person makes it a perfect template, a perfect skeleton on which to build up any kind of game you want, really. Hence, all the mad shit in that season pass. But this did get us thinking, what other games out there could work as a template for another, more outrageous theme and setting for its season pass? Let's find out. Imagine, yeah? Witcher 3, but like gothic horror and that. The Witcher 3 is so loved in part because of its incredibly detailed, carefully constructed world. The land of Velen and Skellig, all the locations in the game, the world of the Witcher that it takes from is what gives the game its richness. Now, imagine that game with a character like the monster hunter Geralt taking place in a Bloodborne-esque world of gothic horror. Imagine Geralt of Rivia hunting down and facing off against the kind of horrors informed by the writing of H.P. Lovecraft or Edgar Allan Poe. CD Projekt Red woven plenty of horror themes into their Witcher games. It is, after all, closer to dark fantasy than straight Tolkien-esque high fantasy. The Witcher 3's Blood and Wire expansion pack took players into a very nice, very splendid, very noble world. <laughs> It was. It was. It was all of those things, it was yeah. Extremely spicy. And now, imagine the opposite of that. Flip that on its head. Basic, but dark. Well, it works, mate. Shadows and that. What's that? Is that a shadow? No, it's a big ghost. What an excellent idea. Let's look at another one. You know what else would be good, yeah? Grand Theft Auto Five, but cyberpunk. Grand Theft Auto V is one of gaming's most impressive worlds. It's a city, it's rural areas, it's mountainous regions. It's its own ecosystem. There's a reason people still play GTA Online to this day, because there's lots to see, there's lots to do, and it's a world built around logic. We know that Rockstar can deliver the goods with other settings not based in the real modern world as well, because Red Dead Redemption is a thing. Imagine if one day Rockstar turned their sights not to the past, but to the future. Imagine they wanted to explore the dingy, dark underbelly of a cyberpunk world and satirise the hell out of it while they're at it. I know CD Projekt are working on a cyberpunk game called Cyberpunk as we speak, and God, we cannot wait to hear more about it, but imagine the world that Rockstar could build. Imagine the characters they could create and the stories they could tell if they tried to make something set 200 years in the future. It's such a good idea. Yeah, CD Projekt Red have already kind of just took that idea. Yeah, I'm gone, we'll and do it. Yeah, we're gonna do it, but imagine Trevor just levering a hologram or trying to like for a hologram, yeah. he just comes punching. He looks like Trevor, exactly like Trevor, except he's got like three lines yeah. here and they're, they're like blue. Yeah, but because it's not really Trevor. It's like is a he, replicant and that. Is he, is he a robot? Is that? Is he like just kind of an augmented yeah, real man. guy? See, it's already better than GTA. Right, so how about Dark Souls, but in Westeros? Listen, yeah? Dark Souls is a dark, messed up world where no one is safe and the main character dies before the story gets going. Sound familiar? Game of Thrones is TV's Dark Souls, that's why. And Dark Souls is gaming's Game of Thrones. In fact, we don't really have television or video games anymore. All we have are things that land on a scale of how similar they are to Game of Thrones or Dark Souls. Every single game that comes out is now Dark Souls meets something. Likewise, no TV show can stand on its own merits without being compared as the Game of Thrones of... Whatever. 
Why not mess up the entire pop culture ecosystem and combine the two of them together? Game of Souls is Game of Thrones meets Dark Souls. I can see the what culture title now. Finally, the circle would be complete. The ultimate crossover. We could all finally get on with our lives. Everything is kind of like Game of Thrones now, isn't it? And everything's kind of like Dark Souls because they're two really good things in which people die. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's about. just like a reference point. Is that what's what's that new TV show? So it's set in the future. Is it kind of a bit like Game of Thrones, aren't it? Yeah. Ooh, what's someone's that? dying it. Yeah. Ooh. That a could be a bit Thrones, like Game of Thrones. Ripoff. Yeah. Uh, you know what I like about that game? You die in it a lot. It's kind of like Dark Souls, Ooh. actually. Yeah. Like, and uh, but you know what? You reason. come back as well. Yeah. And then the bad guys yeah. come back as well. The combat as well is a lot like Dark Souls, and you know. If Game of Thrones and Dark Souls combined, then how? Well, you can't compare that what to anything because it's yeah. itself. It's an immovable force and an unstoppable object. Yeah, you break the universe. You know, you just destroy the universe like that Hadron Collider in It'd Switzerland. Be dead just sick as well, wouldn't it? Crushed stuff. Right, you like this one? Forza Motorsport, but pod racing. The Microsoft exclusive Forza Motorsport series is regarded by many as the best series of racing games available today. I mean, racing cars just never felt so accurate. But you know what's better than cars? The pod racers from Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Maybe a little side bit in there as well with other vehicles like the speeder bikes from Return of the Jedi or Luke's land speeder. Just think about that. That would be f***ing well good. There was a pod racer game once, wasn't there? Yeah, it wasn't like Forza though, was it? Oh, he's dead old now as well. Yeah. <laughs> Shit graphics. There's not even a good soundtrack. Imagine I, it now, but you could upload your yeah. own soundtrack. And be I, like... I want my pods to be accurate as well. I want it to be like really, yeah. do you know what I mean? I want to feel like an actual race car driver. I don't want to be sliding around corners or anything. I want to it's follow funny, a yeah. line along the track to really tell me exactly how to race properly. It would have a dead sick story mode as well, probably. Yeah. Right, last one for you. Here, here's an idea, yeah? Sleeping Dogs 2, but Brentford. In Sleeping Dogs 2 Brentford, you play as a British police community support officer called Wendy Davies in the Brentford area. Uh, it'd be good though, wouldn't it? It would be decent. They're making a film about Sleeping Dogs now, so now's the time to move if you really want to capitalise. <laughs> so this is the Saturday show, so let's take a look at some of your comments. Okay, so last week on my fireside chat video, Gamekeeper says, the sarcasm is just dripping, love it. Fuzz out the faces of everyone but Jake though. We all know who it is, but it's funny. I'm the fireside chat, you're not the fireside chat. Don't you ever, ever, ever tell me how to run this f***ing show again. <laughs> Thanks so much Gamekeeper, see you next time. Bit of That's true, there, true Jake. No, I think it's the other way around. And commenting on our games as a service video, the Midnight Thunder Boy says, God, I love Neo Automata. Would love to see it become its own franchise. Does everything have to be a franchise, though? No, I don't know. It's a spin-off of another franchise, though, isn't it? Drakengard. And there was another game before Neo Automata, just Nia. Yeah. And they said that they're going to do a sequel, so it kind of is becoming a franchise. Yeah. But yeah, but that's the thing is, when a, when a company or a corporation goes, we'd like to turn this into yeah. a franchise, that is, I'm just, uh, yeah. Do you know what would be really good? So let's make another trilogy. Yeah, 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 I was gonna say the exact same thing, another trilogy. I'm commenting on our Battalion 1944 video, Righteous Bruce says, this is just a tribute. Yes, exactly, it's just a tribute. That was the little joke that we put in there because uh, we didn't actually record the gameplay footage of that. So what you're seeing there is not Jake playing yeah. the game. So what happened is, it's Jake just funny, sat really. in a video, mm. Uh, with contributing nothing to it, he wasn't playing the game. Right, he didn't say anything, <laughs> and and that that's funny though, right? No, but that's good. It's if true. You're playing it's the game, very true. If you're playing the game, I was close to just editing myself out. Honestly, all it would have took was a little <laughs> bit of a crop. Because like, but, but you were then, focused on the game, which we didn't get to see gameplay recording. Yeah, I, you got, it was sick though. It was really yeah, good. It was so good, but we couldn't we could never replicate <laughs> it, which is why what you're seeing is just a truth. Yeah. And finally this week on our Shadow of the Colossus remake video, XX MLG Swag Carp XX says, it's literally the same game. Nothing changed. Don't buy it, cause there's already a Shadow of the Colossus on PS4. It, it is it's a, a remake, remake isn't it? It's, it is. That's what they've done. They've got the game and then they've gone right. Let's make that good. Let's, let's make it again. We're going to remake that game. It's going to be the same game, but again. So now what you've got is, uh, is, is an artistic masterpiece that is also a technical masterpiece because it just looks incredible. They're, they've not tried to hide this. They've not gone, yeah, yeah. boom, here's Shadow of the Colossus. You've never heard or played this yeah. game before. Uh, it's a new game. Yeah, it's called the same thing, so you don't get confused with yeah. Shadow of the Colossus 2 or nothing. It's just 
Shadow of the Colossus because the game is just actually Shadow of the Colossus. Hope that helps. Keep them coming. So those are some video game season pass ideas from us. Have you got any better ideas? Let us know what they are down in the comments below. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this every single day. You can check out that video right there, right now if you want, and the link to Patreon if you want to support the channel. See you next time.